This is game time. Welcome. Uh, this is a very special episode. Not just because an Indian guy has made it to the World Chess Championship final, fighting for the world title, uh, but also because a certain Magnus Carlsen, just ne, मतलब खुद की पूरी reputation ऐसे बनाई थी that he could see thirty, forty, fifty moves ahead, uh, which no one else could. उन्होंने ऐसी चीजें कह दी थी गुकेश के बारे में, डी गुकेश के बारे में that uh, well, I think गुकेश took it too personally and. Uh, he not just became the youngest candidate to win the tournament and proceed to the world title match but he did it in some style now before you know we get into the whole thing just the whole ek ek cheez jo pura magnanimity of the achievement ko capture karti hai gukesh is 17 year 10 months when he qualified for the final and below him are some lightweights like Gary Kasparov he was 20 years 11 months and even further lightweight uh, Magnus Carlsen 22 years and 2 months and then you had Mikhail Tal and Anatoly Karpov which is ka matlab kaun hai ye log kisne inke bare mein suna hai right uh, Amit Kamath is with us Amit has been doing a lot of heavy lifting over the last 2 weeks almost uh, living in a Canadian standard time I don't know Canadian standard time US standard time jo bhi hai but uh, around that time and jet lag brave karke he is here with us today to talk about Gukesh for someone dumb like me who doesn't understand chess x h4 and knight kaise move karta and all those things thoda sa breakdown bhi karega about the matches that decided the whole thing for gukesh but more than anything we'll be talking about indian chess jiske bare mein we have had many episodes in the past of how they come of age but seriously amit this is one of those things which uh, maybe we said it and it also came true yeah absolutely and in fact me look at it this way ki every successive step that we take keeps telling us that you know indian chess is taking a step ahead step ahead and matlab every time we try to look at something and think of it as a giant leap there in a few months we have another giant leap which is even more significant like when five people had qualified for the candidates including three in the open category we had said ki are big deal because before this only vishwanath and anand used to qualify then i think since 2014 till uh, 2024 we had nobody in 10 years जो भी कैंडिडेट्स हुए देर वॉज नो इंडियन गोइंग देर सडनली यू हैड थ्री इंडियन सो विट दैट वॉज द नेक्स्ट बिग लीव नाउ यू हैव वन किड हुज सेवेंटीन हुज ऑलरेडी मेड इट टू द वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप बैटल एंड आई मीन टू बी फेयर आई प्रोबेबली विल कम अक्रॉस एज I might have to end up eating my words just like Magnus Carlsen in November or December, <laughs> but then there is a very healthy chance that Gukesh might actually win the whole thing. only because of how vulnerable the world champion ding liren is currently looking so don't discount that this big leap that we are seeing the fact that gukesh had made it to the world championship that might actually become like a chota wala matlab wo everest base camp pahunch gaya abhi everest chadai karna hai wo wala thoda na ho jaye ah uh, i mean i think we'll come to ding liren and the world championship match a little later i mean i really wouldn't want to jinx that uh... I mean the world championship match of course is later this year perhaps what november december this year it's it's yet to be finalized but around that time but I'm in august uh, last year on august 5 2023 uh, we did an episode which was headlined why 17 year old gukesh is the worthy successor to vishyanand that was the time when gukesh just for a brief period jab se wo pura game of thrones start ho gaya tha in indian chess became the top ranked indian player displacing anand after what feels like an eternity 36 years well yeah that's like how much i have been on this planet uh, i guess uh, <laughs> but uh, gukesh did that and i mean since then it's crazy right because jab tak wo ek cheez nahi hui thi we were all about you know pragnananda and other kids who were literally kind of dominating the world chess circuit and gukesh ka rise has been like spectacular because he literally came out of nowhere or he started playing seriously of just a few years ago 13 saal ki umar mein he got his what gm title 12 years 12 years incredible what were you doing when you were 12 years old man uh, but uh, i mean in those 5 years to have your rank gm title at the age of 12 and by 17 to kind of be contending for the world championship match it's spectacular rise and one thing amit that really struck me is just how mature beyond his years gukesh is the way he speaks the way he conducts himself during a match uh, 
the most poignant moment was i think that when the final round of matches began all the players were kind of concerned about what's happening on the other board but gukesh was one of the only players who didn't look really that bothered about it he seemed in control all the time so that is a thing that stood out for me about his personality you've kind of followed him very closely through this period what's the thing that you like about gukesh i think meer uh, in fact uh, during the last round there were moments where even gukesh got a little bit uh, you know concerned about what is happening in the other boards because that time what was happening is he was playing with hikaru nakamura on a board and on his right just slightly behind him there was a board with uh, fabiano and nepo were playing and we saw that there were moments when gukesh was almost out of his chair looking uh, to his right behind him because he also wanted to see what was happening in that board a lot was tied up on that because like he was also trying to ascertain if that game is heading for somebody winning then he could have also tried and you know defeated hikaru nakamura which would have helped him avoid a playoff or a tie break but eventually i mean the moment that stood out for me to be fair was uh, i've written about this as well but uh, in the 7th round just before the halfway stage of the candidates gukesh only lost one game in all those 14 games that he played in uh, toronto and that defeat came against ali raza firoza who was losing most of the game to gukesh gukesh was winning 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 then suddenly he ran into time trouble and next thing you know gukesh actually you know he finds himself in a position where he has to make a certain number of moves in a few seconds and while doing that he messes up and he loses and if you look at that moment immediately after he loses obviously like anybody would he is very heartbroken he's crestfallen in that immediate moments he buries his face in his hands then suddenly as if you know there's an inner voice reminding him that you know don't forget your manners boy it's that sort of a moment where he remembers that you know there is certain decorum to be followed so he drops his whole uh, hurt whatever inside him forgets that for a minute extends his hand across the board congratulates the winner then again uh, realizes that you know he's lost a game that he should have ideally won you know goes back to mourning that defeat then again realizes that you know decorum follow karna again starts setting up the board again then again sits by himself on the board for a while kind of mourns the defeat and then he turns up at the press conference like a lot of players we've seen during the event where they've chosen not to come for the press conference after they've lost gukesh in a sense was slightly different the only defeat that he had in the tournament he decided still to go for the press conference sat there for that post mortem while his opponent was basically sitting next to him giggling the whole time because the opponent also realized that he had basically escaped and not just escaped his escape with the win i mean it was a significant moment also in the tournament uh, phase because if gukesh wins that he goes into the halfway stage of the tournament as the sole leader So I mean it gives you a mental psychological boost going into the half phase as the sole leader half a point ahead of the rest of the field and then from that position to lose right so that was one moment that stood out for me which really showed his maturity right and uh, you know Carlson very now in famous words he predicted a complete breakdown on Gukesh's part especially in the later half of the tournament which didn't happen but Amit uh, you know just if you take a step back and very briefly if you can just like explain how the tournament was set up like you mentioned the seventh game the defeat and you know the sole leadership chance that gukesh lost but what was the format like it was not conventional in the sense that jaise kafi sare baki sports ke tournaments were it wasn't like that so how did this one play out yeah to be fair uh, nothing about chess is conventional the way they do things is like thoda sa atrangi hota hai so the candidates uh, just for people who are who are maybe not familiar with the format the candidates works out in this way that uh, there are eight competitors there is a double round robin which means every player has to face every other player twice and because there were three indians there were two americans the format states that you are supposed to play your own compatriots first in the first few uh, rounds so that it doesn't come to a position where you are in the 14th round and you are playing an indian and your compatriot knows that you know a draw will help you win so he is not trying to beat you because that person does not have a chance so they make sure that that does not happen and all throughout uh, it was a very very tough candidates you spoke about magnus and i think one of the things that stood out was uh, magnus had basically given gukesh this advice that you know a lot of players are going to go crazy during this tournament you don't go crazy you just make sure that uh, you have your wits about you don't go crazy so gukesh was in that he was basically maintaining the pace with 
the rest of the guys and it was only in the second to last round that he actually surged ahead by half a point and then saw it through in the last round right and it's also one of those things right where uh, the world at large i think took note of uh, indian chess and i mean it's not like we were kind of hungry for validation coming from the world western world especially but a lot of times the west has been obsessed with a certain type of players in chess uh, i don't know if it was always the case but you've seen that especially in the last 10 15 years but i think this is the first time that they noticed and this is not just about gukesh but just this whole style of indian players the whole innovative approach that they had the aggression that they showed on board belying their age and everything which really i think that a lot of people commentators experts on chess kept on saying it came as a revelation for some not so much for a few others amit like gukesh of course was and is the winner of the candidates but why was this like a great event for india besides him even Mirf, before I offer you my answer, let me just read out a tweet from Gary Kasparov, the legendary Gary Kasparov that you mentioned. Uh, Gukesh just left behind in that <laughs> list. I know what you're going to read out. The yeah, line that's he, going to be on. About, yeah, he spoke about you know the Indian earthquake in Toronto being about shifting tectonic plates in the chess world, and he didn't just mean Gukesh. He also meant the other guys, and he spoke about how the children of Vishy Anand are on the lose. Right. Let's move. beside a uh, look beside uh, gukesh for a minute you also had somebody like a prag who was kind of surprising players left right and center with the tactics that he was choosing right he would come to games and start playing something that basically made all of them do like a double take thinking that oh wait this is something new that we are seeing from the guy so you had that you had somebody like a vidit uh, gujarati who was i think he went for broke in most of the games he was somebody who was just offering up his uh, bishops for free knowing that he was giving him an advantage he was doing all sorts of things that you would not expect at the candidates i think whatever magnus was saying that you know other players are going to go crazy i think gukesh and prak kind of did that they were still i mean they were not going completely bonkers but they were causing a lot of surprises to their opponents then you had somebody like a koneru hampi who she finished second uh, in the women standings a lot has not been spoken about her but she's finished second in the standings of course the candidates is a tournament where finishing second and finishing eighth is literally the same like nobody is going to care the players are not going to care sure you will get maybe a slightly better uh, prize money you will get a medal but i mean i don't think the players particularly care about that you had somebody like a vaishali and the most remarkable thing about vaishali was she had a run of four consecutive defeats she is about to lose her fifth she basically is one move away from getting a draw from her opponent and she's in a position where she's about to lose the whole game her opponent refuses a draw because chess has basically that thing where you repeat three moves and you get a draw her opponent refuses that vaishali goes on to win that's her first win after four uh, consecutive defeats she ends the tournament by winning the next four games so she ends up uh, basically having the same number of points as person who finished second which is koneru hampi so that was also incredible from vaishali to have you know four defeats then suddenly bouncing back with five consecutive wins so that kind of shows you a little bit of mentality that the that this earthquake that gary kasparov speaks of that's going to be a feature not a bug of course this momentum that's building now of course will be tested uh, in november when the world championship will be held so how does it work is it like now because it's india and uh, china dingleren the reigning world champion if because it's just the two of them so the championship match will be held in one of these two countries is it or can it be on a neutral territory as well so it depends on who bids for it oh and india is going to bid for it yeah absolutely india will want to bid for it so today we've heard comments from the aicf uh, secretary so he said that you know india is going to bid for it he's also named the states that will be in running surprisingly gujarat he was the state he mentioned first so gujarat might actually be the state hosting it or the i think the second uh, state will be tamil nadu so a bunch of these states are in the running india will obviously bid we still don't know which other country would want to bid for it but one of the things that fide has done which it also did last time when uh, dingleren was playing against uh, nepomniachi they made sure that uh, the reason why astana was hosting it over i think mexico also was or one of the south american cities had bid for the last world championship and one of the reasons that fide gave for uh, giving it to astana was that so that the time zones are convenient for fans of russia and uh, china 
So I think that is going to be one of the considerations. India obviously has made its uh, intent of wanting to bid for it clear. I don't know whether China will also look to bid for it, but they just might. So then it becomes like a it, it becomes like a race in a sense. Yeah, and and why not, right? I mean, you you'd be surprised if China does not bid for it, given that they have a great pedigree in hosting big events. So, uh, Ramit, I mean, we just like you know. Me sorry to cut you, but I think to be fair, China would also want to bid for the women's world championship, considering both of the players are Chinese and they have a like crazy history uh, when it comes to women's chess. I mean, but I'm sure there'll be a thing where you can bid for both and have yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, right? you can. You obviously can. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking like cost-wise, everything. It just kind of makes more sense to have both championships at one time at one city. Also, the hype of it will be kind of amazing then. But I mean, you feel very strongly that uh, I guess uh, I'm just like predicting. I'm not reading your mind and just like that. Uh, that this is one of the finest moment in Indian sport since the turn of the century. Is it the case? I think it's one of the top three at least. Top three. Yeah, yeah, I think you can include uh, like India winning the Cricket World Cup in 2011. You can include, uh, I think, Neeraj winning the gold medal, and then I think this has to be in the top three. I don't know. I you will, I think, obviously disagree. To मतलब हॉकी का कुछ तो टू से गाउस में नहीं नहीं हॉकी भी छोड़ना मैं मतलब ये भी नहीं जा रहा. Like it's a great moment and all, but I don't think it's like yeah. really one of the top moments in Indian history of this century. I mean, see, it's a great moment. If it was the first time that an Indian is qualifying for the World Championship, then it would have been a fine moment as well. But you kind of also miss out on Abhinav Bindra, on those Nehwals and Sindhus. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I mean there is just like whole list of performances which have had an incredible impact on Indian sport psyche, and. If Gukesh ends up winning the World Championship, then it becomes one of the top five moments, I guess. But right now, I think it's it's yeah. too early for me to kind of say this is the thing. Shashank is here. Uh, he'll have, I'm sure, things to say on this. Actually, I don't have that much to say on it. But yeah, I mean, I I agree with Mihir, I guess. I mean, there have been like yeah, Abhinav Bindra, for example, like that would be big World Cup. Of, of course, I'll I'll count that. And Neeraj Chopra is another thing that is big. I mean, More than 2011 World Cup, as much as 2011 World Cup, also the 2007 T20 World Cup for uh, the impact it went on having for on Indian cricket. So yeah, are we discounting anything in wrestling? Oh yeah, I mean that's what right. It's a very long list of achievements. But Mir, so that's the thing, right? With see, once you've given birth to a child, right, you are basically partial to it, and. I think I am saying this only from the fact that I have also put in so much. This is a labor of love for me, right? Because I have woken up at eleven o'clock in the night, sat up live blogging for fourteen straight games for over three weeks from midnight twelve o'clock to five o'clock. So my judgment is going to be a little askew. I I admit to that. So please allow me that much. थोड़ा सा मतलब bias ना मतलब इसलिए मैं सुबह ग्यारह बजे तक जगा हूँ इफ इट्स नॉट फॉर द टॉप थ्री मोमेंट देन वॉट इज इट फॉर इट एक्टली वॉट्स इट फॉर देन आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन वन इट यू नो वन कम्स टू होस्टिंग वर्ल्ड चेस चैंपियनशिप लाइक द रिसोर्स दैट गेट यूटिलाइज आई मीन इज इज द चीपेस्ट वर्ल्ड इवेंट टू होस्ट टू बी फेयर या इट कैन बी बिकॉज सी राइट नाउ द कैंडिडेट यहाँ पे हुआ था दैट वॉज लिटरली जस्ट अ हॉल like it was a historical hall or whatever you want to call it but it was like literally it was called a great hall it was not even like an elaborately named hall usko bada sa hall tha usko great hall bol diya so i mean you can host it in a convention center for all you care right it doesn't matter but to be fair uh, because of the sense of occasion and stuff past world championships have been held in i think world trade center mein hua tha jab vishay anand was playing casper yeah, yeah the top floor of world yeah. trade center so you can make it as elaborate as possible you can probably send both these guys into space and make them play there in zero gravity and stuff but you can also make them play in a convention hall so but you know one of the things that uh, you know about hosting this championship which i find uh, i don't remember who made that point but someone did point out that uh, Uh, when anand played his world championship title match the last one in chennai the pressure was so incredible on him that it kind of contributed to his defeat and you'd wonder if especially you know the scenes when which we saw when gukesh returned to india they were all very touching and stuff but the hype that if if gukesh plays at chennai it's going to kind of i think drive him crazy so for that thing i just hope that it's not in india 
Meer, I don't know. I think uh, so. This is one of the things that even Venkat told me. Venkat is our correspondent in Chennai who was there at three a.m. in the morning uh, watching uh, this felicitation that Gukesh had at the airport, and uh, he also told me this one thing that stood out for me. You know that it was three o'clock. He just landed from. I mean, Toronto. Se pata nahi kitne ghante fly karke wo aaya tha. Uh, I think he had spent almost more than twenty four hours just in flights and whatever. So, wo sab kia. He lands up at. Three o'clock. There is a massive hold of camera guys, shutter, shutter bulbs, all of that going crazy. People going crazy. School kids have been brought in. All of that is happening. It's a chaos. It's melly. All of that. Not for once does Gukesh make a face, say that you know I don't want to do this. I want to go. Nothing. Like the boy is as impassive as you could be, as undisturbed as uh, I think unaffected is the word that I'm looking for. As unaffected as you could be. and i think that's one thing that distinguishes the dhonis from the other anhonis on the cricket field right matlab i i am not directly making a comparison i like to point out that i am not directly saying that this boy is the next dhoni or whatever no but that's i think what we meant when we in, in the start of this episode said that you know his his mature beyond his age and it it shows in everything that yeah, he yeah, does yeah absolutely uh, i guess that's all this uh, i think amit is there anything that we can add should add should talk about or we are done me just one point i think i should make uh, because you spoke about his mental maturity and things like that in an interview with his trainer uh, grigoz gazevsky he mentioned how this 17 year old kid basically is so focused on the sport that they had to invent routines just to bring him out of the zone during competitions on rest days like he has to forcibly sometimes take him to play tennis and things like that and this is something that his mother has also told us his first coach has basically told us uh, vishnu prasanna all of these guys have said that you know this guy is so deathly focused on the job at hand that sometimes just having a casual light day is something of a bigger challenge for him he is somebody who is already thinking about the game before he has entered the playing hall he is already simulating things in his mind and stuff like that incredible i think on that note uh, we should say goodbye because it's the best way to end this episode thank you for listening uh, the gukesh episode that we did earlier is on the feed you'll find it in the august 2023 feed so do look it up it's a, it's a great episode where we kind of trace gukesh's journey from being a small kid from chennai to to kind of being india's number 1 and today we've kind of uh, you know he's still not the world number 1 but uh, who knows come november he might be the world champion so Let's see how that goes. Thank you for listening to Game Time, Amit. Yeah, and as uh, Gary Gasparov said, uh, the children of Vishy Anand are lose. <laughs> yeah, that is true indeed. Yeah, that's all we have for today. We'll be seeing you all next week. Thank you for listening. You were listening to Express Sports by the Indian Express. This week's show was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar and produced by me, Shashank Bhargav. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can also tweet us at Express Podcasts and write to us at podcasts at IndianExpress dot com. 